Benny, we drove four freaking hours to this location. We're doing the video. Nah, just chill out. Crack a nice cold beer. Off with you, Benny. Oh, hey there, folks. You just caught me in the middle of a heated argument with my alter ego, Benny. I guarantee this doesn't happen often, so please don't call my psychologist. Welcome back to another episode of the Monarch Journal. Thank you so much for joining me. In today's episode, we'll be paying a much needed visit into the world of self-sabotage and see if we can take at least one small baby step to relieving ourselves of this ridiculous behavior. Join me. So almost all of us are guilty of being our own biggest obstacle in life. But why? You see, self-sabotage is an incredibly complex topic with many facets, but one of my favorite theories, coined by Dr. Judy Ho, suggests that we self-sabotage out of an existential fear of failure. The theory points to the idea that we get a dopamine rush from setting goals, but when it comes time to actually putting in the work and achieving these goals, our fear of failure is triggered and in turn, we engage in self-sabotaging behaviors. One of the most common ways that this manifests is through habitual procrastination. Does this sound at all familiar? Yes, I'm looking directly at you. You see, at the core of it, self-sabotage happens when there is a misalignment between our values and our behaviors. You see, the problem with letting self-sabotage go unchecked is that it can lead to a negative vicious cycle that can control our entire existence. Over time, the results of our self-sabotage can pile up and lead to a low self-esteem and a negative outlook on life. In fact, it can shape your entire perspective. So enough of this shit. Let's get it together and end this reckless behavior for good. But how do we do it? Here's where to start. So I know you ain't gonna like this one, folks, but one of the most harmful ways you can sabotage your entire life is through self-medication, and alcohol might just be the worst kind. So don't get me wrong, I'm not gonna be the guy who's gonna preach for you to go sober. I feel like that decision is completely up to you but I think it's worth it to take a step back and look at what's really behind your alcohol consumption. Oh, and don't you worry. This is just some H2O. Your boy's clean as a whistle. Negative thoughts can be intrusive little buggers, can't they? They seemingly creep up on us out of nowhere, and if left unchecked, they can consume our vulnerable minds. It's important to focus on becoming aware of your negative thought patterns and stopping them in their tracks. No, no, go away. So we all know how hard it can be to look inward, but it's absolutely essential if we want to unravel our self-sabotaging behaviors. For some of us, looking inward can be a lot like opening up that dusty, creepy attic in your uncle's old cabin. It's uncomfortable and scary as hell, but it must be done. You see, the absolute best thing you can do for yourself is to assess your behavior and understand where you're self-sabotaging so that you can take steps in the right direction. Ah, feels so damn good to just sit down and do nothing right now. You see, this is exactly what Benny wanted and this is what Benny got. We're out here being lazy. 
See, I think it's safe to say that it's gonna take a lot of hard work and effort to keep your self-sabotage under control. You could argue that it's a lifelong journey that we need to take day by day. Hell, I might just be the biggest self-sabotager of all time, but let's just agree to get better together. Thank you so much, folks, for joining me on this episode of the Monarch Journal. We'll see you on the next one. Happy frickin' journeys.